<clears throat> Hi, I am Dr. Sana Hashmi, and this week in my print uh, Eye on China column, I wrote on China's attempt to cementing its status as an AI superpower and how it is actively working to secure a prominent position in emerging technologies. Uh, a number of countries are investing heavily in developing their AI capabilities, and of course, China is also in the race. In fact, it is one of the two countries that is leading in the race, another one being the US. So China is allocating sufficient resources to AI research and development. Uh, and in fact, a majority of publications in the field now originate from a number of Chinese institutions. And the percentage of AI research papers coming from China has also seen a notable surge in recent times. Now almost half of world's 36,000 AI companies are either in the US or in China. Uh, and also, there are predictions that Beijing will be investing over uh, 38 US billion dollars in its AI market by uh, in uh, the next five years, by 2027. And according to International Data Corporation's forecast, China's AI market is projected to exceed 26 billion US dollar by 2026. Uh, and we just saw last week um, that China's Taiyuan satellite launch center propelled the world's first in-orbit AI commercial hypersatellite that was aboard the Smart Dragon 3 carrier rocket. Uh, but of course, we are seeing good results from China, but not everything is all good for China. China is also encountering a number of challenges in its AI mission. Uh, the first challenge is the US export restrictions on advanced memory chips and limitations on technology transfer to China. Uh, this is a part of uh, the ongoing US-China rivalry. This has been an outcome of that. But this is also prompting uh, China to seek domestic solutions to um, uh, this issue. And um, But in China also, uh, these bans are widely uh, perceived, interpreted by uh, most Chinese social media users as efforts to contain China's rise, efforts to constrain China's technological uh, advancement. Uh, then another challenge has been China's own impositions of bans on Western search engines such as Google and social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter uh, that has now propelling China to move towards self-reliance. And now it is also driving the development of indigenous technology and software. So this is also one of the reasons that is leading China towards uh, finding domestic solutions. And we also saw that, of course, chat GPT is also not workable in China. So China's uh, Baidu introduced a localized version of chat GPT, which, is named, uh, which was named as Ernie Bot. Uh, and this is accessible solely through uh, registration with a Chinese number. So if you do not have a Chinese number, you cannot really access it. And another limitation of using it is that it's available exclusively in the Chinese language. So if people do not know Chinese, they cannot really access uh, Erdi. Uh, but of course, there are some quality control issues with respect to Erni. And people who have been using it, they're expressing dissatisfaction with Erni's quality. And there are frequent comparisons uh, of Ernie with Chat GPT, uh, uh, with some people actually calling Chat GPT much more superior than Ernie. Uh, then the proliferation of uh, unverified text and defects originating from Chinese sources will also pose a significant challenge for countries that do not have access to uh, China's AI technologies uh, and also software tools such as Ernie. Uh, then there is lack of transparency and understanding regarding these technologies that would further uh, aid concerns about the dissemination of inaccurate or misleading content uh, that might ultimately bolster China's influence operations and limiting the ability of uh, countries that are dealing with uh, Chinese disinformation. Uh, and the problem would be to how to counter potential misinformation effectively. Now, now, there is another um, concern for a lot of countries that uh, it, there will be dual use of the AI technology that are emerging from China. So Beijing's deployment of AI for military purposes is definitely one of the major concerns for countries such as US and other major stakeholders. Um, and in fact, considerable investment have been uh, made into making advancement uh, for China's in China's military and defense industries, ma mainly in robotics, swarming so techniques, and other AI applications. Um, and if China will become successful in that, there will be, um, in fact, it will alter military balance in China's favor significantly, if at all that happens. 
Um, then in addition to advancing its own AI technologies, China is also actively seeking collaborations with countries that do not have a, a somewhat cordial relationship with the US and Russia definitely tops the list here. And there have been speculations. And in fact, there are some media reports about consultations between China and Russia on military AI applications. And we are actually seeing news report that such collaborations and consultations have been intensified in the recent times. Um, then China's prioritization of AI integration into its military strategy further complicates the ongoing discussions about how to regulate and how to govern AI, uh, which is now adding a new dimension and a more complex uh, dimension into the US-China geopolitical uh, uh, rivalry. So uh, now, despite that, China is proactively crafting regulations to govern AI, and there is this willingness to engage with other countries and to have international cooperation on this front. Uh, there were some steps that were taken by China last year, and one of the, um, and in fact, China is becoming one of the first countries to enact legislation specifically targeting generative AI. And uh, in fact, in May last year, during the 12th meeting of the Cyberspace Administration of China, uh, China adopted the interim measures for the management of generative inter artificial intelligence services. And uh, one of the um, interesting uh, points uh, at that point of time was that uh, the measures mandated that the generative AI must adhere to core socialist values and refrain from inciting subversion of state power or overthrowing the socialist system. So this is something about um, that tells us about that China is still very much focused on legitimizing and uh, uh, the uh, legitimizing the CCP. So it's more about the party and the welfare of the party rather than actually governing uh, AI and be concerned about how it is going to impact the people and the cyberspace. Uh, then apart from that, additionally, at the um, AI summit in the UK last November, China also pledged to collaborate with a number of countries that were participating in the safety summit. And in the joint communique, we also saw that there was an aim to ensure the safety and responsible development of AI technology. So there is there are indications that China is trying to be a part of the collective efforts to govern AI, but uh, it remains to be seen how effective these uh, measures are going to be in times to come. And despite these promising in initial strides, there remains a concern that as the risk of AI becomes more and more visible, China could potentially weaponize AI capabilities and disengage from collaborative efforts. And this is something that we have seen in the past in other areas such as climate change. So um, engaging in dialogue and cooperation with key players um, it's very important for China primarily to demonstrate that um, it is a responsible stakeholder. And this is something that China has been trying to portray. China has been trying to portray itself as a responsible stakeholder. Um, uh, so it's very important uh, for China if it really wants to establish projects, its image as a responsible stakeholder. But at the same time, it also uh, it would also acknowledge the importance of addressing ethical and safety concerns in AI development and that, and that China is very serious about that. Uh, but I feel that the future trajectory of uh, China's AI policies and its approach towards the AI governance, it uh, definitely depend on uh, how the US policy is going to be towards China and what concessions it receives from the US and its partners, as well as on whether the geopolitical landscape uh, is going to shift in China's favor. Thank you.